Hey, welcome back to the channel, everybody. This is Kevin, and joining us this week is Rob Boyd. You might have seen him on Cisco's uh, TechWise TV that uh, he created and hosted for many years. In fact, he was with uh, Cisco, I think, over 19 years. He can correct me if I'm wrong on that. Uh, now he's doing something for Explainers. We'll ask him about that. But uh, hey, Rob, thanks for joining us. Thank you for having me, Kevin. I'm. Uh, I cannot tell you how many times I've watched your content, so many yeah. videos. I've been wanting to know <laughs> about a particular technology, and I do the YouTube search, and you pop up, and you just explain it so simply. Oh, I just, uh, I just love it. And I, one of the things I wanted to ask about, because yeah. in case people don't know, watching this on YouTube, we're coming to you from Cisco Live uh, 2022. Yeah. First time we're back in person in a while. And I know there's a lot of pent-up demand, people that haven't been able to attend for a while, and I'm sure we've got a lot of first-time attendees, a lot of first-time attendees next year as well. Yeah. So for those people coming up, what would you recommend for somebody to make the most out of a Cisco Live event? Because I know you've been to so, so many of them. Yeah, I think, it's funny, I was just having this conversation with someone uh, a little bit earlier. I think, in my experience, now I come to these events, I started when I was working for Cisco in the, in the field, uh, before I got into TechWise TV and was doing that type mm -hmm. of thing. Um, I didn't get a chance to go to very much in, ter in form of tech. That was back when Cisco Live was uh, networkers. Uh, networkers. Mm -hmm. You know, but the education focus is still here. And that kind of guides my most of my recommendations, which is, I think, to get the value out of something like this, it helps have an objective. What yeah. It's not just going to go, because I don't think you'll get much out of it. Because I think any conference can be good if you're there for a specific reason. And I usually think those reasons come from two areas. It's to, uh, now it certainly could be formal. Um, and it may be tied to how you get funded to come here. Because if that's the case, then do whatever you have to to make sure that, you know, the people that helped pay your way, if that's the case, you know, that you're rewarding them with the appropriate knowledge, certification, whatever it may be. Mm -hmm. um, but I think it's, it's about two things. It's about learning, and to me it's about people. Um, and it's really about connecting with people. So if you have an objective, one, this, you're not going to get a better concentration of smart people who are always friendly, but this time of year, you know, for this event, they are ready to receive your questions. So it's, yeah. and, and Cisco very much has encouraged that. And so I feel like, come here with an objective, come here with something you want to learn or discover, maybe a few things that you want to um, uh, explore further and then seek those people out to kind of get those connections and be willing, especially in these like uh, meet the engineer sessions and such like this, is be willing to come in with um, uh, being able to speak to a rough idea of your current networking situation because the benefit here, you have the, the replay and the certainly good to see the presentations, but those are generic and they don't apply right. to your specific situation. Right. So if you're one of those that has a network, you know, situation or, or a, a big long-term objective, it helps, I think, to come in and go, let me talk to some people to give me some ideas so that you can be pointed in a better direction if you're not that mature on where you're going or simply refine it. So I think access to people and knowledge is the things that I would always look for here. Mm -hmm. But for me, it's also about reunion. Uh, it feels like yeah. I really missed that. We did the virtual you know, for several years and I was fortunate to get to still host with Cisco TV, uh, the virtual broadcast working from my home office. And I'm grateful for everything I've learned and can talk a lot about the benefits of doing that. But uh, yeah, I'm so glad to be back here in person. Uh, how, how many, if you happen to know, how many events have you been to over the years? I don't know. I would guess around 20, um, mm -hmm. something like that, which I think is because I only go unless I, if I'm doing something. It's very rare that I'll go to an event just to attend. Right. Um, I think, you know, one thing that's different if someone's familiar with the work that I do is I'm not an engineer. Right. Um, I'm a t person who has learned to firmly believe in engineers as being kind of the best salespeople in, in Cisco. And so I learned mm -hmm. that quickly and realized that's where I was going to find success was figuring out how to not, not anything I was doing, but mm -hmm. figure out who the smart people were, plug them into the, in front of the other right people. And then that kind of worked. And that's pretty much what I built TechWise TV around, which was, mm -hmm. um, I really like that middle ground of, of, uh, not so deep that it's training something perhaps right. that you would provide right. because that's very valuable, but that's not at all what I provide. It's, sure. a, it's another layer that's deeper than the marketing because that's always frustrating to me is yeah. to read the marketing and go, I feel like there's something there, but you're not really proving it to me. And they stay so high level in some situations that I'm like, I can't tell the difference between this and something else because you're using the same repeated buzzwords and stuff that we all get tired of hearing. And granted, I'm fond of using them because I'm often paid to use them, but but it's really that, what's that middle ground of, of, of figuring out how a technology might apply to me, and that's where I tend to focus. Sort of the connective tissue that ties together the marketing with the, yeah. the in-depth training. Hey, let me interrupt your training video really quickly to let you know how you can get Module 1 in its entirety of any of these courses you see on screen for free. Just visit the link, sign up, and you can taste test any of these courses or really all of these courses. All right, back to the video. 
are there any memories that really stand out to you over the years? Maybe a, 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 just something that was super cool that happened or maybe yeah. something super uncool that happened? Any, any big memories come to mind? I'm fortunate that in most of the situations historically, there's none this week. For, you know, for, this is a little bit smaller as everybody's getting their feet back underneath them. Yep. Probably um, meeting some of the guest speakers at Cisco Hires has always been fun because mm -hmm. for whatever reason, for most of them, if, if it was allowed in their contract, I would get to do the interview after Chuck Robbins or John Chambers back mm -hmm. in the day. Um, where I would do a different interview and where I had to come up with what's going to be different based on what they just talked about. So it started William Shatner was probably one of the best ones. Oh, that's awesome. And the memory from William Shatner was, it, it would, there was a classic, he comes down, Jimmy Ray was my co-host, mm -hmm. and he and I were there. We really hadn't done too much in the way of the Cisco TV broadcast. We were kind of new to the formality of that, uh, even though we knew each other and this kind of thing. But we definitely had this thing where, so Shatner comes in, he comes in late, and one of the hard things about doing a live show is that we have to fill time with just stuff that I'm sure no one's paying attention with the stuff we're just making up and trying to keep a reason to have the cameras on us sure. until the handlers get him over off the main stage and hustle him over and redo microphones and IFB and stuff for him to join us on stage. Yeah. And so he comes on and he was just down to earth and he was just like, he had the same general, like, general question that Jimmy Ray and I had, which is, you know, why are you here? <laughs> you know, because it really boils down to it. He's here because he did something that as geeks, we I have all have a special place in our hearts for Star Trek and what he represented, but he's also done a lot more since then. He's a very accomplished actor with a lot of interests and things that we wanted to explore, and that's where we tended to focus. Mm -hmm. But he couldn't have been nicer, and it was not a rush. It was one of the only ones that wasn't a rush, because I got to interview Brian Cranston a couple of years back when he was with us. Um, and then there was one other one that was pretty good. Oh, the uh, Mike Rowe. That was another oh, good yeah. one that we did yeah. when he was... Cause I, yeah, the Dirty Jobs guy. Yeah, the yeah. Dirty Jobs guy, because as I... As a person, he's always trying to figure out how do I come across on video to just be not broadcasty, but yeah. normal, relatable. Sure. Mike Rowe to me was very, very good at that. And yeah. you know, he's just got a delivery that you're just like, oh, that's so good. And then when I tell any girls that I'd met him, they always like, oh, <laughs> and I'm like, I have no, I have no connection. <laughs> he's not doing remember me ten no, minutes after funny. we finished. But it was fun. Uh, yeah, you, you've been uh, exposed to so many technologies. I've, I've watched you interview so many people. What technology really excites you today? Or if somebody's getting into the industry, what technology would you say, hey, you need to go check this out? Oh, that's a good question. Because I, I think it changes. Because I'll admit there's a certain part of me, every technology, when I'm starting on, I tend to, what I tend to try and get good at is learning quickly. Mm -hmm. Because the thing I kind of suffer from here is that I, I'm fortunate that I get to work kind of on the marketing side. So I really don't have to, it's not like a, an engineer would, has to live with the recommendations that they make. I get to you know, skim off the top and kind yeah. of make promises that I don't have to live up to, but I always am conscious of them. I don't want them to be made up. I want mm -hmm. them to be real. So every technology to me always seems a little bit unapproachable from the very beginning. And it's not until I'm, it's the, it used to be when I was in sales, it's the fact that I have to present it to someone, whether it be on camera or in person or something, it kind of drives my, my knowledge dive. Mm -hmm. And so there, what I'm always looking for when I dig in any technology is, where do I turn that corner that says, oh, this is starting to make sense and I'm starting to, it's, it's hard to uh, get anybody to understand this, but it just feels like I understand how this solves a certain problem. Yeah. Now, it may not be the best at it or something, and I'm usually trying to support the angles of whoever's hired me to kind of figure that out, but I feel like I can't really speak to it until I've gotten the passion behind it. And, the, and it's come from the strangest places. Like I had a chance to work with, uh, was it Rakesh Chopra? A distinguished engineer mm -hmm. um, on Cisco, uh, I think he's a, he may be a Cisco fellow now. Mm -hmm. um, and we were working on kind of a long-term podcast essay on Silicon One. And so what I like about this, is I love origin stories. And so understand, well, you know, Cisco's not new to Silicon, but this is different, you know, and there were different companies involved and, and, and different origin stories of the people and, and the kind of the, everything from like when we first introduced UCS, it's like, well, what's different? And how is this not a server, yeah. you know, in, in terms of the language, you know? And, sure. and for a while, of course, there is some, something to latch on to, but we've got to move quickly because the market's not going to let us maintain that. But I would say UCS was fun once I got over my fear because I was, I was new to data center technology in general. Mm -hmm. But that was an obvious one. I always like, I always like the, the core technologies kind of scare me. Guys like yourself have been... You're so core that I'm like, I don't ever want to try and pretend that I could teach you something about those things. But it's easy within Cisco when you're, when you're overwhelmed with all this information is I like to pick off the edges. So it's a new wireless. It's a new, it could be optical, which I've dove in and out of. And that one always, I have to restart from scratch. Anything service provider, optical takes me the most mm -hmm. to get my energy back up, you know, and, and get it. Um, but I don't know. I mean, I, it's, so I guess the long answer to that simple question <laughs> is simply that I like 
I like all technologies, just some of them come faster than others. Gotcha. Um, you know, and because I don't actually manage an enterprise or have to deal with anything, it takes me a while to also turn a corner and, and, and under, make sure I understand the reality of our customers or the, the audience, you know, for that. And so something new usually comes out of that, but I usually start with relating it, you know, whether it's my surveillance projects at home or IoT projects at home, mm -hmm. or I was over at the Nerve truck. Uh, they've got a brand new Nerve 2.0 truck. They sold off or gave them away. The older Nerve trucks uh, that were based on an international, I think, was the machine. Very, but this is a Ford F550 diesel, turbo diesel that's much more fuel efficient, but it's designed, I forget how many kilowatt hours it has, but they can roll up. It's a much more efficient, Mor fully Meraki now, mm -hmm. uh, inside the uh, the truck, and they run for eight hours before they need any kind of shore power or turn on the generators. That's wild. You know, so it's very... Uh, you know, and I find that stuff fascinating because like, oh, I wish my truck had that, you know, because <laughs> I got the hybrid truck with all the extra electrical stuff, but it doesn't have all that I have. That's, right? awesome. That's kind of fun. That's wild. Uh, now we're, we're talking a lot about uh, TechWise TV. Now, you yeah. haven't done that in a while. You've now started your own company, as I understand mm -hmm. it, uh, Explainers. Am I pronouncing that correctly? Yeah. My Kentucky accent? <laughs> as yeah, as no. It's, it, so the name of the company came about. So it's, I started that and it, trying to figure out, because as I was leaving Cisco in 2019, at the end of 2019, before we ever knew the pandemic was, sure. was going to hit us, um, trying to decide what to do. I really enjoy the storytelling and I enjoy getting yes. involved. I enjoy working with creative people, but I also enjoy staying focused. I have no desire to do anything like this or, or even think that I could survive to do anything like this in a formal, normal way, like TV or broadcasting or something like that. Mm -hmm. But what I do like is I like hanging out with geeks. I like sticking to networking technologies and things that are related to that area. So I don't want to go do pharmaceuticals. I don't sure. want to go do even uh, too far away from networking itself in terms of technology space. Right. I don't want to go do an you know the latest Android update or our iPhone. God, there's enough people doing that stuff yeah. and I enjoy their content, but it's I can't add anything unique to it. Sure. So Explainers was created, really, the name is, is, was just my attempt at a play for Explainer right. focused on, you know, people that are geeky, nerdy, and stuff like this. Yeah. And, and so it's a little bit hard to always explain what the, how to spell the name out and stuff. And so I, sometimes I'm like, I don't know if that was the smartest. But at this point, and I would say it's still evolving, a lot of it is just simply about, um, I, I, do, I work a lot with WebEx. The, mm -hmm. it, I call it a media and education company, but I would say the charter is continually changing. It's my own thing, and it's, it's really not too... There's, not really that many other people involved. It's very contract-based. Right. But so, you know, with WebEx, I'm doing a lot of producer work, writing, putting content together. Um, but what I want to do, what I really like focusing on is it's really about, I feel like there's so many people that are good at storytelling, uh, I mean, that are good at understanding their technology and they're passionate about it, but then when it comes to expressing that in a way that can be consumed by others, that's another level right. that I feel like not everybody makes and it doesn't mean the person's any less intelligent or has any less of a story to share it's just how can I help because that's a large part of what I base the hosting that I do so right. if I were to interview yeah. you as an engineer my objective is to figure out how do I keep the energy high and get the very best out of what you want to give because you and I are able to talk you're a great talker but and I don't mean this to imply you are this way <laughs> sure. but you know many engineers it's like you they talk fine and you turn on the camera put a microphone in front of them and it it becomes too formal or they would stumble and I'm like but there's good stuff to be shared here so I think how can I help that happen? You know, one, encouraging you to increase your skills, because I think it's worth it for everybody. Mm -hmm. And as I do a lot of work with WebEx now, it's constantly, it's like, come on, people, you need to know how to work with your technology to put your best face forward. We all learned right. that during the pandemic, especially. Yeah. You know, pay attention to your lighting, <laughs> make sure you're, you know, you thought about your sound and get your head higher up in the frame and some basic stuff like this that could really make a big difference on how well you're received. Mm -hmm. So Explainers is really focused on helping people do that, but how I go about doing it, it's still a cross between just me doing it myself mm -hmm. um, because I got to pay bills. Um, in the last couple of years, especially with the pandemic forcing a pivot, it's like, can I make a run at this? Am I going to be able to pay myself what I at least made at Cisco and then start to expand from there? So I work with other partner technologies and some other things like that. Uh, it's fun to start getting outside of, outside of the Cisco technologies and see, oh, okay, this what's, you know, th there is something besides a Cisco punch that we drink. Which of course I always understand, but I don't. Sure. Until I'm forced to kind of see how it's working, then it, it becomes entertaining. And so I'm I'm looking forward as that continues to build. I'm working with a couple of startups to uh, help on their messaging and things too. So we'll see where that goes. It's still early days, I think. I'm, but, I'm sure it's yeah. going to be awesome because, I, like I said, I've I've uh, been a fan for many many years, and I want to thank you for joining us. It has been fantastic. Thank you. Hey, thanks everyone for joining us. We'll see you next time.